right. Hello, everyone. My name is Marianne Alaoui. I'm technical artist for Epic Games, part of the Special Project team. Today, I'm really honored to present to Substrate, the new layering system for Engine and Fire. The beautiful, the beautiful jungle demo called Electric Dreams demonstrates this new powerful feature that improves a lot the visual fidelity. Sorry. All materials in this demo are using this new material system by simply enabling the option in the project setting. But now, let's talk about what is Substrate and how is it working. Before going into the details, it is important to understand one of the core features. In traditional real-time rendering, reflection is calculated by merging all the parameters all together to output a final specular that's going to be more or less accurate. With this new system, Unreal is able to separate each reflection for each layer by calculating them separately and that's going to output the result for you. With this in mind, artists will be able to work with accurate material based on an optimized multispecular, also called multi-BSDF, that will increase the visual possibilities. By upgrading the new material graph, Unreal is offering more flexibility with less complexity by merging multiple shading models into a single node. Default lit, subsurface, skin, and fuzz would be all merged together. Each layer in substrate are composed by an interface, here in yellow, and a medium in blue. Substrate helps to reason about what we manipulate and how light would interact when dealing with those properties. Every node we are playing with are allowing physically accurate transition, but still allowing artists to do some variation and explore different art styles. Each substrate element will generate a special topology, allowing the engine to easily reorder the layering system. Substrate is coming with a new node called Slab that offers a lot of advantages. With parameters, you can create a huge variety of materials that could combine different shading models into a single asset. Each BSDF is represented as matter, where stacking them together is resulting in a variable list of packed bytes that will change based on the complexity of the material. You can compare this, like this topology of the system to a G-buffer, for example. This adaptive storage enables per pixel topology and features scalability that provides a range of optimization without sacrificing the quality. This is one of the key elements of substrates. Don't lerp anymore just use substrate operators. The new layering system allows you to physically transition between matters such as dielectric and conductors. Parametric blending is a link per layer optimization that gives you freedom to choose between performance and quality. Note that this is going to be inside the different operators I'm going to show you just after. Substrate is offering you two main types of composition, horizontal, that will mix the two slabs on the same depth, computing both specular individually to mesh them together. And the vertical composition that take into account the thickness or the depth of the top layer to apply transmittance and proper absorption based on your input. Finally, the weight coverage node that is working similarly to an opacity layer where you will be able to change the opacity of a specific slab that is also working per pixel. This is very useful as you could remove the entire slab from the material evaluation when the coverage is set to zero. If your project is currently using the old material system and you would like to upgrade to substrates, you will be able to use the substrate legacy conversion that allows you to automatically make your old material compatible with substrate. When enabling the option, all materials will be automatically converted using that node. You don't need to do any kind of manual work for this. But now that we cover the theory, let's go for a few examples. That's going to be better. One of the best updates is giving the opportunity to, transi to transition sorry, between dielectric to metallic, for example. In this video, you can see the nice transition between the two types of matter. By calculating two separate BSDF, Substrate will render the transition with accuracy. On the right, 
you can see the material graph composed by a horizontal layer blended with a mass texture. This example is a bit different, as you can see. Substrate is now allowing artists to play with the F0 and F90 values. This new functionality increases the possibilities by keeping the results physically correct. The F0 and F90 has been added to the slab to facilitate the control. Here, you can see the simplicity of the material graph by simply giving the two colors directly to the nodes. We also extend the possibility by adding a thin layer node. This is representing a matter, a layer of matter, sorry, that absorbs part of the light and allowing you to see this very nice chromatic effect. You will be able to play with the various parameters such as IOR, normal, and thickness to vary the results. It is important to keep in mind that this approximation is based on the view angle only. By upgrading our new shading model, we are now supporting the second roughness as a default feature in Substrate. This will give you more control over the shape of the tail for the specular by just creating a new node called haziness. This is going to simplify the work a lot for you. The first model has been also improved a lot. The artist will be able to have more flexibility and will be able to work way better with this new shading model update. Simulating the fuzz with improved physical representation will make your material more natural than ever. The rough refraction is a new feature implemented in Substrate to facilitate the process of creating rough layer by blurring the bottom layer for the opaque material, for example. But here, as you can see, this option is also working with translucent material by blurring the scene color based on the depth. With this option, you don't need to do any custom tricks anymore. This is just working. All right. Now that we covered like some simple example, I would like you to go for a more complex one. We're going to rebuild together the nice uphole effect we used in the Electric Dreams demo you saw just before. In the first place, we will create the bottom layer representing the back of the element. To increase the depth feeling, we will create a fake refraction effect that's going to be based on normal and the view angle by changing the specular. For this, we will play with the F0 and F the F90 we just saw before. In order to decrease the strong contrast of the specular highlights, we will use the new haziness node to grow the tail in order to affect the reflection. The middle layer is a bit more complex. The idea is to add this nice chromatic effect created by the topology of the piece. We will first generate the parallax occlusion to simulate the 3D model inside the material. Then, by reading the depth saved in the texture, we can sample the material information directly inside the vertical layer. It is important to imagine this layer as a translucent matter that absorbs a certain range of the light in order to reveal the bottom layer. An additional anisotropy effect is used to break this linear reflection giving a more natural look by playing with the tangent, for example. By adding a coating layer, we will increase the depth of the parallax effects. The clear coat, similarly to the previous example, will also use the substrate transmittance mean-free path that simplify the mathematical representation of the transmittance, giving us the opportunity to output the final color based on the thickness or the depth. You could imagine this coating has a thick piece of tinted resin, for example, that have been polished. Finally, let's add some dust onto this multi-layer material. By simply adding another vertical composition node, we can properly generate and calculate all those complex BSDF that are all very different. One of the advantages of substrates is the possibility to split each group of matter as an individual pieces on your graph, which gives the artist a clean material asset, which is very important. 
We can also use metal function to clean your work in order to help the readability of the material. All right, with all those effects, you will need to control the performance impact of your creativity. To help artists and engineers to have some feedback, Substrate is coming with different tools to dig inside this layering system. Various view modes have been added to track your material complexity. As you know, stacking multiple VSDF could be expensive if you're not too careful. However, Substrate will help you to find the best combination between performance and quality. The first, view, no, the first view mode is showing the number of BSDF you have per pixel. By simply looking at the colors, you will be able to approve the usage of extra layers in your material based on your target quality. It is a very simple view mode, but it's very useful and could you save you a ton of time. The second image is showing an in-depth layers or an in-depth information on your different layers. You will be able to inspect each element, such as roughness, diffuse color, and minimal values. By overing the material with your cursor, a 3D gizmo will help you to analyze each normal of your material. In an additional information will be added to the screen in order to visualize the performance impact on your memory. That is very important to keep in mind. The last image is an example of many advanced view modes you have in Substrate. However, this requires to be enabled in the project setting. This UI is helping to inspect each layer and understanding how Substrate is reading your material. This advanced debugger is heavy on the performance and needs to be disabled if you are targeting for performance. This it is important to note that the current system do have some limitation. This experimental feature is currently allowing the artist to have a maximum of eight slab, as well as a limited number of tangent space in your material. All right, so what is next? Substrate is currently not supported by the past tracer, but the team is working really hard to have it working properly. We would like you to still use both options in order to validate your result with the pass tracer. As you know, a continuous effort is made by the developer to always improve the performance without losing the quality of your material. Both performance and optimization are in the radar of the engineering team. We are also trying to be listening for feedbacks in order to improve the stability of substrates. All right. If you have any question, feel free to see us directly at the booth or attend to the session that's going to be also happening at the booth today. I would like to do a special thank you to the rendering team, especially to Sébastien Hilière and Charles de Rossier, who has been amazing creating this amazing framework. With all this in mind, I would like to thank you and enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>